After 13 days off, the Port Huron Prowlers beat the Binghamton Black Bears last night and they'll search for the series sweep tonight from McMoran Place. Good evening everybody, Will Wiggleman and Joe Noonan here with you on the Port Huron Prowlers YouTube channel. Thanks so much for joining us tonight and it was a great effort for the Prowlers last night. Definitely probably their best game in over a month. I'd say so and you see the, the week off really helped the guys out, a lot of energy, good effort, um, good speed that they played with up and down the lineup. A few guys back from injury and you get a few new guys in there too in the mix. Saw guys like Evan Foley and Liam Freeborn building an instant chemistry as they got put on the same line last night. A few points for each of them, a goal apiece, each with the primary assist on each other's goal. And we'll see if those same lines will stick together tonight. We'll let you know coming up on the pregame show. You're watching Port Huron Prowlers Hockey on the Prowlers YouTube channel. Adventures await you at the award-winning Doubletree by Hilton Port Huron. Experience the breathtaking view of sailboats and freighters framed against the background of the impressive Blue Water Bridge, all from the comfort of your elegant guest room balcony. Planning a wedding? The Doubletree by Hilton has the perfect setting to celebrate a marriage with its wonderful landscaping and beautiful reception area. So whether it's a romantic getaway, a family vacation, or a company outing, sweeten it with a view to remember at the Doubletree by Hilton, Port Huron. Just minutes away from puck drop here at McMoran Place as the Prowlers and the Black Bears get ready to do battle for the final time of this regular season. The sixth and final time, the Prowlers have won three of the first five meetings between these two teams, including last night. And it was a game where the Prowlers just seemed a step ahead of the Binghamton Black Bears. They kept taking the lead. Bingleton kept tying it. It was 2-2 in the second, but then a late goal from Matt Graham really turned the tide in that second period. Prowlers got two in the first 90 seconds of the third period, and that put them ahead for good. A Again, we talked about a great effort from the Port Huron Prowlers, and they were led by their head coach, Matt Graham. A goal and two assists for three points. He was named the first star of the game last night snapping a five game point drought. And it's good when you have your leaders leading uh, if you're the Port Huron Prowlers. Yeah, it is. You want the guys that are telling everybody else what to do to be able to say, and I'm doing it too. You know what I mean? If you, if you have your head coach and your assistant coach on lines with yourself or, or just mixed in throughout the lineup and they're telling you to do something, but they have an off night, Maybe it's a little bit harder to take them at their word, but when they're out there producing like they were last night, you know for sure to listen to what they're saying. Let's take a look at what that finish means for the standings in the FPHL. We did not realize the other last night that the Danbury Hattricks had clinched a playoff spot. They are the first team in the FPHL to clinch a playoff berth with 77 points atop the Empire Division. Binghamton can do it with a win tonight. Meanwhile, the Prowlers got some separation from the Motor City Rockers with Motor City falling to Mississippi in overtime last night. And look out for the Mississippi Seawolves because they could be coming, coming on the come up and maybe give Motor City a bit of a run for their money. Yeah, they could, and Motor City's right on our heels, so we got to keep winning games here. But you see over in the Empire Division, it's really Delaware that may have clinched it for Danbury, not with last night's game, but overall they're 20 points behind where Mississippi is, looking at the two last place teams in each division. So that's where you see Danbury really secure that top spot there because Delaware is not going to catch them. It's wrong on the graphic, but Delaware did pick up its second win of the season last night, snapping a record 28 game losing skid. They beat the Elmira Mammoth. That allowed Watertown to jump back ahead of Elmira for third place in the division. Let's take a look at the Prowlers lineup tonight and not a single change in it. Same line, same deep pair, same starters, and same starting goaltender for the Port Huron Prowlers. And why not when you play your best game again in over a month? No reason to change anything. You just want to do it a little bit better with a little bit more intensity on the second night with Binghamton here looking to 
get a win out of the weekend, not go home empty, empty handed. They're gonna come back with a better effort tonight for sure. Well, Dylan Thackeray made his pro hockey debut last night and he's starting again alongside Alex Johnson. What did you think of him yesterday, Newts? I thought he did I thought he did a really good job. He played a pretty simple game. He didn't do too much. Looks to me like he sees the ice pretty well with the puck on his stick, but he's able to keep his feet moving at the same time, which opens up some more passing lanes for him, especially along the blue line and coming out of the zone. Well, the Prowlers getting set to step out onto the ice. We will take you down to ice level for the rest of the pregame ceremonies.
Sarah Dent on the national anthem. As usual for the Port Huron Prowlers tonight. Well, let's take a look at the starting goaltenders for tonight's game. As the Prowlers running out the same goaltender, Wyatt Hofflin. Once again for Port Huron, this time he'll go up against Taylor Joseph, making his second start as a member of the Binghamton Black Bears. He signed back on February 2nd after one SPHL appearance with the Roanoke Rail Yard Dogs. He has played two games in the AHL, both with the Toronto Marlies, and that happened while he was at Trinity Western. And he played those two games in nearby Abbotsford, British Columbia against the Abbotsford Canucks. He does have a victory recorded in the AHL here so far this season. A 27 save performance and a victory last weekend against the Delaware Thunder. He is 1-0. Meanwhile, for Wyatt Hoffman, 34 saves on 37 shots last night. And he was able to pick up his 10th victory of this season. So an interesting goaltending matchup for sure tonight. Matthew Boylar is sliding in, starting on defense for the Binghamton Black Bears. He did not play last night due to suspension, but he is back. That means Matthew Sproul out of the lineup tonight for Binghamton. He told you the Prowler starters earlier. Let's give you Binghamton's. It's going to be Yates, Kirkby, and Lewis up front. The previously mentioned Boylar is paired with JT Walters on defense. Face off tied up. We are underway in the second of two matchups this weekend and the final of six. Here's Merritt on the steal. Backhand just pushed it wide. The final of six meetings between these two teams this season. Prowlers have won three of the first five. Lewis touches that puck. Offside is the call. And we have our first whistle. 26 seconds into period number one and already a little bit of pushing and shoving in front of the Prowlers bench. I bet we're going to see a lot of that coming right out of the gate. There was a little bit of feistiness in the third period last night and nobody's forgotten about that. We saw that feistiness last night as really late in the game. Austin Federley and Frank Schumacher got involved with JT Walters. That shot steered aside by Hofflin. Prowler's wearing specialty jerseys tonight for CL Spirit night. CL Spirit is the dance company that hosts the Prowler Spirit squad. So that is the... Specialty jersey tonight for the Prowlers. The only difference in numbers is Dylan Thackeray, instead of wearing 46, he has number 14 tonight. Everybody else staying the same as far as numbers go, and that's very good as far as this league goes with specialty jersey nights. Usually you see at least two or three. But just the one number change for the Prowlers for this specialty jersey night. Ivashkin. Into the zone, played it off of mini skate. Yeah, Ivashkin held to just an assist in last night's game. His. Here comes Thompson, scored a goal. That was assisted by Ivashkin. He gets dumped by Gino Mini. Devaney able to chop it further. Here comes Freeborn, left it behind for Mini, and Freeborn just couldn't drag the leg, so the Prowlers. In a delayed offside situation, now they touch up. Two minutes gone, first period. No score yet, as Colin Fitzgerald holds behind his own net. 17 games since his last goal. He feeds it to Jake Schultz, who wrists it in, and Hofflin catches it and hangs on. 17.49 to go, first period. Shots right now, one to nothing for the Binghamton Black Bears officially. Newberg and Federley get set to draw. Matt Graham not taking faceoffs on this line. 
Tory McLean went out to play the point. He didn't realize the puck was just going to sit there for him, and now he sends it in. Parker chops it off the boards and out. Henning sends it up out of Hainzel's reach. Comes back into Prowler territory. Hofflin stops it behind his own cage. McLean playing back into his own end. He lifts it high and out, and that's going to be a delay of game penalty against Tory McLean. So the Black Bears go straight to the man advantage tonight. Two power play goals for them last night. And it's Tory McLean, the guilty party. We have some pretty short glass here, McMorrin. I'd say the glass behind the nets here, which is typically, as it is here, higher than the side glass, is about as tall as a, the side glass at a normal arena. I think McLean is, is only about half a foot shorter than the glass that he just put it over. Just gonna have to get used to that Prowlers get the quick clear. Here's Chartrand jumping on the puck in the offensive zone, takes the shot, and a save by Taylor Joseph, his first of the night. Watch out for that guy, Dan Chartrand, when the Prowlers are on the penalty kill. He was one of the few bright spots in the month of January for Port Huron. Two shorthanded goals, including the game winner, the last time, the last series between these two teams, that Saturday night in Binghamton. Prowlers won that game 6-5 to five after getting blown out 13-2 to two the night before. That's a heck of a turnaround, but that's why you play the games every single night. Yeah, that's right. You wouldn't guess by watching the game last night or the game so far tonight that that would have been the score in Binghamton, but different lineup for the Prowlers than what they had that weekend. They had to run some seconds off the clock as the clock did not start at the beginning of that penalty. I, they ran it down to a minute 55 on the penalty, so they said all of that took about five seconds. I think it took a little more, but we will see if the Prowlers can finish this penalty kill. Ivashkin pulls up in the zone, gives back to Yates. Ivashkin again on the half wall. Yates up top, over to Kirkby. Kirkby sauces it back over to Yates. Kirkby again, wanted the shot, gave over to Ivashkin. That pass didn't work, but the Prowlers couldn't exit the zone. Odd man rushed down low, and that pass hit Alex Johnson. Comes out in front, Foley has it. Fanned on the clearing attempt, Chartrand able to get it as far as the red line. Kirkby gives to Thompson back in, he shoots it wide. Chad Lopez able to stop it on the far half wall. Here's Ivashkin, leaves it for Yates. Yates steps around Thackeray. Yates comes around in front, fumbled with the puck, and finally Foley able to clear it all the way down. Quick up from Joseph looking for Lopez. 43 seconds left on the Tory McLean penalty as the Prowlers get it back out, and Jake Schultz forced to handle it. Puck played over by the Binghamton bench. Prowlers wanted too many men on the ice call. It won't come. Meanwhile, the Black Bears played in. Good hit there on Brett Parker by Matt Graham. And Jay able to poke it out to center. Parker plays it in the zone, but offside is the call against Binghamton. 17 seconds left on Tory McLean's penalty. 15.33 left to go in period number one. They'll move the faceoff to center ice. Graham and Newberg getting set for it. Mac Lewis pokes it back to Fitzgerald. Lewis was one of the two Black Bears to score a power play goal yesterday. Austin Thompson the other. Prowlers have officially killed off that penalty, and McLean disrupts Schultz right out of the box. Two on one developing for the Prowlers. Jay has many. Jay tried to feed across, didn't get there cleanly. Now Minnie again in the corner. Looking for Jay. He couldn't handle the pass. And now Newberg back out. Minnie keeps it going back the other way. Here's Merritt into the zone. Couldn't get the shot off. 
Genyon gets it deep, comes all the way around. Henning puts it off the back wall, popped out in front, and rescued there by Fitzgerald. Adam Haynes all the way back in his own end, but icing is called. That puck just reached the goal line, barely, but icing it is against the Binghamton Black Bears. We will step out. 1-1 the shots, nothing, nothing the score here from McMoran Place. You're watching Port Huron Prowlers Hockey on the Prowlers YouTube channel. I've worked at Pioneer and now Corteva for 36 years. It goes by very quickly. This is a pretty noble profession for your giving back to humanity. Curiosity is so important. I learn something new every day. What's that next challenge that may occur for farmers? You do really feel like you've got an impact on what's coming. I can see how we're making things better. And we have the best solutions for our farmers. And I think we're here to feed and fuel the world. I'm proud to be part of that culture and I'm proud to be part of the company. No score yet, 14.33 to go. Opening period, Prowlers getting a bit of a fortunate icing call and they'll look to take advantage with the merit line out there for an offensive zone faceoff. Sam Gagnon taking Dalton Jay's spot up front on the left wing for this shift. I thought Adam Hainsel was going to get to that puck before it reached the goal line, but the icing call was made and the Prowlers get an offensive zone draw. Looks like they're trying to get a little face-off play set up here while they're waiting for the refs to get ready. Well, you do have to get every second of every media timeout, of course. Referees just making sure of that. Somebody's got to pay your salary, Will. I hope somebody will. Here's Schultz. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Short trend. Tied up in the corner, Schultz works it up the boards. And it's chipped back down to Prowler Ice. Icing waved off this time as Henning, oh, broke Cutting's ankles a little bit as Cutting took a spill into the boards. Play kept is D'Angelo across to Cutting, takes the shot, and Hofflin over there in plenty of time. D'Angelo down the slot, and Hofflin has that one. He'll hang on for whistle, 13.55 to go in the first period. Taylor Cutting just had to take an extra second with that pass from D'Angelo across. That gave Hofflin just an extra second to get there. Yeah, he was able to regain his feet, which is always good as a goalie, unless you're unless you're sliding into the save as the puck is reaching you. You don't want to be sliding out of the angle. Oh, and Taylor Cutting just got himself in trouble. I saw the referee make an unsportsmanlike conduct signal, I believe. Or if you're a basketball fan, he looked like he teed him up. Gave him the tech. We'll let you know as soon as the, as soon as it comes down, but the Prowlers got a power play goal yesterday. And that was a real big turning point. It was Matt Grimm's. He tied Sam Merritt for the team lead with seven power play goals. And now Port Huron gets its first opportunity on the man advantage. To a side scrum in the corner. And it's cleared down by Binghamton. You would have liked to see a third prowler get in there, right, Noons, just immediately because you have the extra man. Yes, for sure. Uh, anytime you're on the power play and there's a loose puck, you always want to have one more guy than your opposition does going after it. There you see. Freebs is getting in there. They have that now, but the puck is pinned up against the boards. Puck squirts loose. Freeborn couldn't turn it on net. Bodies flying everywhere. And Kirkby able to send it all the way down. 45 seconds gone and the penalty to... They say Chad Lopez, but I think that's Taylor Cutting sitting in the box. Yeah, there's Lopez out on the penalty kill. but So it says Chad Lopez here on my live stats, but it is Taylor cutting in the box for the next minute, unless the Prowlers can score first. Unsportsmanlike conduct, the official call. 
Graham feeds it up to Jay, who tips it in. Chasing after it with Walters. Walters gives it to Ivashkin. Tried to dump it out, hit back Graham. And then the backhand try, able to get it down. Really nothing doing here for the Prowlers as far as the setup. Oh, you want to get it to the point where if everybody's not even in their perfect spots, you want to snap a couple passes around and that'll kind of obediently set the defense in place. The, the defensive team that is on the penalty kill, get them to back off a little bit, but right now are just kind of running around trying to catch up to the puck. Lopez with a steal down low to Ivashkin. Lots of moves, and he just dangled himself out of a shot. Wyatt Hoffman just stayed right with Nikita Ivashkin and stared down one of the FPHL's best scores, and Schumacher knocks down Ivashkin. Ivashkin had lost his helmet. A penalty is coming to Frank Schumacher. That's a heck of a shift for Nikita Ivashkin, but let's go back to Wyatt Hofflin just staying with Ivashkin. So many moves, and he was all by himself. Yeah, he, he had a lot of moves in front of him, but he never stopped the direction that he was skating and decided never to pull the trigger because there really just wasn't a whole lot to shoot at there. Curious to see only... Shuey going to the box. It looks like he's got a little bit of a gash on his forehead. It, his helmet certainly got messed up. He's not going to cross-check somebody from behind like that without being pretty upset about what had happened right beforehand. Well, you certainly talk about not a guy that goes looking for it. They talk about how Ivashkin didn't have anything to shoot at. White Hoflin, 6'2", 188 pounds, a very big presence in the net, just a little bit bigger than you knew. Yeah, uh, you can say he's a guy that I've been looking up to all season. <laughs> False start on the faceoff. Newberg and Foley in there to take the draw. Foley and Chartrand up front for the Prowlers to begin this PK. Hainzel and Henning on defense. Here's Justin Henning able to wrist it all the way down. Fitzgerald starts out. Gets the red line, gets the Prowler blue. He slows up, tried to feed it to Parker. That was taken away, and Chartrand sends it right down towards Taylor Joseph. Shots on goal right now, officially 3-1 to one in favor of the Binghamton Black Bears as we approach nine minutes gone in this opening period. Parker off the backboards. Rims around towards Schultz. Schultz head up, gets to Newberg in the slot. And that one blocked by Minnie on the way through. Now Thompson with a move to the net. Couldn't find the target. And it goes out to Fitzgerald back in Black Bear Ice. Halfway through the penalty to Frank Schumacher. Officially two minutes for cross-checking. Hofflin rims it around himself. Only got as far as Lopez. Now Thackeray. Pulls up behind the net, gives it to Matt Graham. He just gets it out of the zone. Ten and a half minutes to go, opening period. Gavin Yates back in. Black Bears switching up their power play unit. Kirkby took a hit from Jay. Ivashkin trying to drive through a bunch of prowlers, ends up finding the puck on the other side, but couldn't get a shot off while he was still in front of the net. Kirkby just kept that one in at the line. Thompson swung it, missed at the puck. Kirkby takes the shot, saved by Hoffman. The rebound bounces around down there, and the Prowlers able to clear it out. Final seconds ticking off of the penalty to Schumacher. Back to five on five as Sam Merritt turns up ice. Cross corner dump, Austin Federley after it. Shipped it away from Yates. Boylar comes in there to intercept. Now Gagnon shoved off by Boylar. Here's Yates. Works it up to Lopez. Tried to find Yates on the other side. Instead, he only found Evan Foley. Hainzel turning away from pressure. He'll head behind the cage and give over to the Prowlers' captain, Dustin Henning. Boylar blocks it down at center. And it looks like they're going to call the hand pass on there as Boylar came down to block that dump. 9.16 to go, opening period. No score yet from McMore in place. You're watching Port Huron Prowlers Hockey on the Prowlers YouTube channel. 
Adventures await you at the award-winning Doubletree by Hilton Port Huron. Experience the breathtaking view of sailboats and freighters framed against the background of the impressive Blue Water Bridge, all from the comfort of your elegant guest room balcony. Planning a wedding? The Doubletree by Hilton has the perfect setting to celebrate a marriage with its wonderful landscaping and beautiful reception area. So whether it's a romantic getaway, a family vacation, or a company outing, sweeten it with a view to remember at the Doubletree by Hilton, Port Huron. Back here at McMoran Place, 9.16 to go, opening period. And the shots right now, 6-1 to one in favor of Binghamton. Just one shot on goal for the Prowlers in over half a period of work. They'll get it sorted out. Binghamton only had one shot even later into the third period last night, or, or may have even been zero shots. They ended up out shooting the Prowlers in that period. Black Bears have the last five shots of the game. That includes three on that penalty to Frank Schumacher. All of them stopped by Wyatt Hofflin. Walters over to Boylar. He feeds it up to Newberg, but Black Bears are into the zone just off sides. So we'll have another stoppage. And the Foley line sticking out there. Foley line that was very good for the Prowlers yesterday. Liam Freeborn a goal and two assists. Joe Devaney a pair of helpers and of course Foley a goal and an assist himself. Freeborn taking Larry Vartian's spot on this line. It's Boylar with a shot and the save. The rebound they score. It's Josh Newberg cleaning up the loose change and Binghamton gets on the board first with 8.55 to go in the opening period. That puck gets rimmed around there and gets through a couple guys on both teams out to the point. And then Hoff kicks out a rebound right to a guy that's standing behind uh, the Prowlers that are supposed to be covering and picking up sticks. It came off Hoff's shoulder pretty hot, so it's tough to react to that. Binghamton, uh, Newberg there just got a little bit lucky. Right place, right time. It landed on his blade. Federley looking for a response, but he played it off of Kyle Powell's stick and out of play with 8.46 to go in the period. Josh Newberg, his seventh goal of the season, 48th of his FPHL career, now in his fifth season. Black Bears are his fifth team. Also played for the North Shore Knights, Watertown Wolves, Mentor Icebreakers. He also had a stint in Danbury. So that puck flies out of play. So officially it's Newberg from Boylar and Parker. So Boylar picks up an assist in his first game back from a one game suspension. Face off will come to center ice. Federley in there with Lopez. Tied up there for a minute and Federley tried to dump it in, went off of Powell. Here's McLean. McLean sends it around. Joseph out to leave it for Powell. Comes over to Thompson. Rink wide pass looking for Ivashkin. Got past him. Johnson up the boards. Finds McLean. Turned up the other way. Here's Ivashkin in. Thought that one was very close to offsides, but they let it go. It was Thompson just trying to stretch out the leg. Here's Ivashkin in the corner. Tried to send it to the net. Graham up to Federley. He deflects it along. 7.48 to go in the period. Prowler's making a full change. Mini over to Schumacher. Up to Chartrand. Chartrand turns away, dumps it in. Joseph rimming it around towards Thompson. He gives it on for Schultz. Schultz dumps it around. Hofflin rimming it this side. Chartrand gets it out. 
Jay tracking it down. Schultz is back, here's Dalton Jay. Gets out in front, backhander saved by Joseph. He hasn't seen a lot of rubber in this first period, but a good save there from Taylor Joseph in the Binghamton net. Now Chartrand just gets it deep. Here's Schultz under seven to play in the opening period. Shots on goal right now, seven to two in favor of Binghamton. Yates from the outside, stopped by Hoffman. The rebound sat there in the slot. Devaney able to go off the glass and out. Comes down on goal. Joseph plays it to Boilar. Boilar turned it off the back of the cage. Second chance opportunity gets it to Kirkby. Here's Yates into the zone. Poked away from him by Gino Minnie. And Minnie's going to jump into the rush. Freeborn to the net. Freeborn all the way around. Pokes it further. Henning kept it in at the line. Foley and Boilar come together. Now here's Walters. Walters stops up, goes over to Boilar. Back to Walters, six minutes to go in the first period. Newberg knocked down by Foley and then knocked down again. Good physicality there from Evan Foley. Prowler's trying to turn the puck the other way. Here comes Freeborn. Over to Graham. Puts it down low, saved by Joseph. The rebound lay there for a second. And now that puck sent out of play. Prowlers want a delay of game penalty. And it looks like the referees are going to give it to him. Although Matthew Boylar disagrees. They'll get together to convene. What'd you see? I couldn't tell from here. I was uh, looking at Grammer and um, Coachman following up the play behind the net. Looks like the Prowlers are going to go on the power play, though. Well, Newberg is the guilty party. So another power play opportunity for the Prowlers, their second of the evening, and a chance to tie this game. They send out the Federally unit that scored last night. Jay goes to the point to Graham. Graham over to Federally. All the way across Schumacher, had to recover that pass. Here's Jay, steps and shoots, and a glove save by Joseph. It's a good opportunity there. That's probably what you're looking to get out of, splitting up Graham, Dalton Jay, Johnson, and Merritt from their original unit for most of the season. Those four guys, they're pretty puck dominant players, and. Sometimes it, it's better to split up the town a little bit so you get a guy like Dalton with his signature wrist shot, able to get it off there, maybe get him a few more opportunities and not take anything away from Sam Merritt and Alex Johnson. Graham tried to tip it on net, could not. Now Fitzgerald with the puck trying to clear. He gets it off the glass and all the way down to Prowler Ice. Port Huron beginning to switch up the power play unit. Federley sauces on for Schumacher. Kicked it right to Schultz. Jake Schultz couldn't clear. Federley winds, passes it, gets it back. Austin Federley wrists it on net. Saved by Joseph. The rebound's there. Merritt able to recover it. Jay tried to chop it on net. And now Foley took a, took a cross check from Schultz. A penalty was coming. And then Schultz gave him an extra whack. Maybe there's an extra penalty coming for Jake Schultz for that one after Foley was already down on the ground. And the fans in those suites behind the net absolutely giving it to Jake Schultz. Evan Foley a bit slow to get up. But they got him on the first cross check and then Schultz went back for another helping. Not sure what Foley could have done to provoke that. He's a pretty classy guy, classy player. My only thought is maybe Schultz thought that Foley took a dive on it, but it was a heavy enough cross check in the back to knock him down the first time, get a penalty for it. I, I wouldn't say that Foley would take a dive. Foley skating back to the bench. Well, Jake Schultz is six foot three, 209 pounds as he's listed. I think Jake Schultz might be a little bit bigger than that. I 
I think so too. See him out there from up here, high where we are. Still looks big, and I've been out on the ice against him before. He's a pretty big guy. Schultz looked like he made a bit of a slashing motion towards the referee to maybe to indicate that's what Foley did to him. We'll sort it out, and we will return with a Prowlers power play. You're watching Port Huron Prowlers Hockey on the Prowlers YouTube channel. Adventures await you at the award-winning Doubletree by Hilton Port here. Good evening, everybody. Will Wiggleman here with you on the Port Huron Prowlers YouTube channel. Freeboard, cutting to the net, save, rebound, score! Every goal. Back to Jay. Rich shot, he scores! Every save. Away the other way for Pandria, saved by Hoffman, the rebound, another one! Every hit. Good hip check! Every. Fire City score! Single. Michael Haskin, the cut pad, heading with another good shot, and then a left! Oh boy! Game. Cardinal. Poked away by Hoplin, and the Prowlers win it! The Port Huron Prowlers YouTube channel. Subscribe now. The official ruling is five minutes for Jake Schultz. So with four and a half to go in this first period, the Prowlers will have a five on three for 58 seconds. Oh, come on, ref. We just did our media timeout. Now they're going to the media timeout. So I guess we get to sit here and discuss it. It's our time to shine. I thought we were already in the media timeout, which is why I went to commercial. But well, what you missed was Jake Schultz being escorted off the ice. Now, we have not seen the penalty come down on our monitor yet. So we don't know if Schultz is just gone for the period or if he did, in fact, get a game misconduct. We will see if it's... Just a five-minute major or five in a game? And we'll let you know as soon as we know. But I think it's the second cross-check that really got him into trouble. I'd say it has to. He Foley was already down on the ice on his knees. Already took one in the back. Knocked him over the first time. I'd be surprised to see a two-minute minor for cross-checking go straight to five minutes i expected it would have been a two and a ten so not sure we'll have to see when it comes across the wire we will let you know as soon as we know but what we do know is that it's five on three for the prowlers for the next 58 seconds as sam Merritt's unit is out there and they're going to have justin coachman take this face off after the forward Got kicked out, that was Kirkby. Prowler's able to win it cleanly. Johnson down to Devaney. They switch spots. Here comes Devaney. Freeborn over to Devaney. Officially it's five minutes for cross checking to Schultz. Johnson wrist shot, block it away by Joseph. Out of play, 35 seconds left on the five on three. Four, 10 to go in the first period. I don't get it. The fans here were all screaming, shoot. And Johnny let it rip and it didn't go in. I, I figured it was gonna go in. You know, the fans, fans always seem to know when to shoot. Here's Freeborn, over to Johnson, back to Liam Freeborn. Freeborn has it again, corrals the rolling puck. 22 seconds left on the five on three. Johnson, the one-timer, and that one rose high. Freeborn to Johnson again. Down low, Merritt. Back up to Johnson. Freeborn, one timer, he scores! Bottle popper, Liam Freeborn has tied the game. I think that may be the first one timer that I've seen Freeborn take all season. Of course, for most of the year, we've had uh, Larry Barty Einan up there with Alex Johnson, both of those guys have pretty good one-timers, but Johnny lets one go, retrieve the puck back, get it over to Liam, and boom goes the dynamite. I know you're a goaltender, so you hate that, but I love seeing the bottle get popped off on a goal like that. As long as it doesn't break, it's not as big a deal. When it breaks and you actually have to go back to the bench and get a new bottle, it's like just getting fresh meat out there for the forwards. It's pretty embarrassing. Jay in with speed and a low shot. Stopped by Joseph and sent all the way down. 
Freeborn's 16th of the season, his third on the power play this season. Assisted by Johnson and Merritt. Schumacher sends it all the way across. That comes back to center. Prowler still in a five on four power play for the next three and a half minutes. We have seen them score a number of goals on a five minute major. You think back to that game against Columbus back in December when they won the game based on scoring four goals on a five minute power play. Graham. Head up, feeds out Schumacher the one-timer, and Joseph slid across for a nice save. Fitzgerald dumps it through Federley and all the way down. Two and a half to go in this opening period. The power play will leak into the second. Coachman rims it out. Prowler's in the midst of a change, so they'll start things off in their own end. Well, you remember the shots were six to one at one point in favor of Binghamton, now 11 to eight in favor of the Port Huron Prowlers. So if you're keeping track at home, that is a 10 to two shots advantage for the Prowlers over the last little while. Prowlers having trouble getting out of their own end, however. Now Freeborn into the zone, Devaney wanted to pull the trigger, but Evan Foley just a step off sides. Minute 53 to go in period number one. Prowlers do have the last seven shots on goal, including that power play marker from Liam Freeborn. Here's JT Walters off the glass down to Prowler Ice. Port Huron is a minute 45 to work with in this period. Lots of pressure there from Binghamton. Prowlers looking to make them pay. Alex Johnson took a stick up high behind the play. Meanwhile, here's Devaney back in front. That pass didn't connect. Johnson able to glove it down at center. Took a hit from Ivashkin. Black Bears get it in. Freeborn leaves it for Foley. And now across to Alex Johnson. That one hit Lopez and pops into the Prowler's bench. Lots of pressure here from Binghamton. A bit of a full court press on this penalty kill. Yeah, I like it if I'm a Binghamton fan. You get a five minute major and if you just try to collapse and play defense and ice the puck for five straight minutes, it's just not gonna happen. You're gonna get hemmed in your zone for too long. So I like to see a penalty kill maybe roll in another unit out there to keep the guys fresh and send them a little more aggressively. Federley collecting behind the net as we hit the final minute of play in this opening period. Schumacher into the zone offsides. Prowler's having some trouble at both blue lines in the, on this power play. What's the strategy here? You just dump it in at this point? I think you probably abandon a little bit of the fancy stuff coming through the neutral zone and just enter the zone like you would normally five on five. Work to get it set up that way. If that means a dump in, that's what you gotta do. Federally able to enter the zone this time. Final minute of the first period. Schumacher back to Federley. Wrist shots, saved by Joseph. I thought Federley was going to pass that puck. Taylor Joseph was not fooled. Graham in the corner with 32. To McLean, up high, Schumacher. Now Federley, over to Jay. Shot from the outside, Joseph got a piece, comes to Schumacher. Federley with 20. Wrists it on, save, the rebound sits there, and Joseph able to get the glove on top for a whistle with 15.1 seconds left in period number one. There are 42 seconds left on Jake Schultz's penalty. As we mentioned, that will leak into the second period, no matter if the Prowlers are able to score in this final 15.1 seconds or not. Puck in Merritt's feet. Johnson able to find it. Freeborn with the final 10. Foley 
Put it out in front, couldn't find Merritt. Three seconds left to go. Johnson winds and fires, blocked by Parker. And that will do it for the opening period here from McMorrin Place. 1-1 one, one hour score as Liam Freeborn scores for the Port Huron Prowlers and Josh Newberg for the Binghamton Black Bears. Shots on goal in that opening period, 13 for the Prowlers and eight for the Black Bears. Prowlers power play one for three in that opening frame. Black Bears 0 for two with the man advantage. So an interesting period. The beginning seemed to favor Binghamton, but the Prowlers coming on strong in the final 10 minutes or so. Yeah, the power play there at the end is a big part of it, obviously. You're on a penalty kill for four and a half minutes, and the first half minute of that is five on three if you're Binghamton. So that's that's how you really build momentum. Ideally, you want to score on that multiple times since you don't lose the man advantage if you do, but they'll come back out with almost half a minute to go on the power play for the second period. Hopefully they can get one at the start like they did last night in the third. So they head to intermission, knotted up at one from McMorrin Place. Valentine's Day is coming fast. Get your special someone a gift from the Prowlers team store located on the west end of McMorrin Arena. Store is open every home game all season long featuring t-shirts, sweatshirts including new styles, socks and more. Authentic and youth jerseys are also available while supplies last. Rep your team in style with gear from the Prowlers team store. We'll take a break and we'll be back later in this first intermission. You're watching Port Huron Prowlers Hockey on the Prowlers YouTube channel.
Back here in Port Huron, just a few minutes away from period number two beginning, and the Prowlers are tied at one with the Binghamton Black Bears. Will Wiggleman, Joe Noonan here with you on the Port Huron Prowlers YouTube channel. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. Before we get into that first period, let's take a look around the FPHL. The Delaware Thunder and the Elmira Mammoth getting set to drop the puck in just a couple of minutes. Of course, the Thunder defeating the Mammoth last night to end a 28-game losing streak in FPHL and likely a pro hockey record as far as I know. Coming up at 7.30, the Danbury Hattricks are in Watertown to face the Wolves in the rubber match of that three-game set in Watertown. The Wolves won last night. Danbury took the game on Thursday. And with the win on Thursday, Danbury did clinch a playoff spot. In Carolina, coming up at 8 p.m. Eastern time, the Carolina Thunderbirds and the Columbus River Dragons do battle again. Carolina coming out on top last night and also at 8 o'clock. The Mississippi Seawolves face the Motor City Rockers for the second time after a barn burner 7-6 overtime win for the home team Seawolves. That one starts at 8.05 p.m. Eastern. Of course here it's one to one at McMorrin Place between the Prowlers and the Binghamton Black Bears. A little reminder of the shots on goal. 13 for the Prowlers and eight for the Binghamton Black Bears. Josh Newberg got the scoring started with under nine minutes to go putting home a rebound after a point shot from Matthew Boylar and then Liam Freeborn a wicked one-timer on the power play, tied things up at one, and that's where we stand in a bit of a penalty-filled first period, especially when you compare it to last night. Yeah, it seemed like each team was just waiting for their chance to go on the power play there. Port Huron with the five-minute major. That took up a significant chunk of the period, obviously, and Binghamton did a pretty good job killing it off so far. That was Jake Schultz who took the five minute major and the Prowlers did score on, technically on that power play. It was a five on three with Josh Newberg still in the box for a delay of game. We expect Schultz to be back because we haven't seen anything about a game misconduct or anything of that nature. So the Prowlers will have 26 seconds of power play time when they step back out onto the ice. Both teams taking two minor penalties each. Each team with a delay of game penalty. So as we were saying about the short glass may ring true as each team lifted one over the glass so far tonight. And then of course, Jake Schultz with that five minute major for cross checking Evan Foley it was a bit of a weird play because he was going to get two minutes anyway after Foley, after he cross-checked Foley the first time and Foley went down, but then he gave him another shot after he was already down on the ice. Yeah, like I said, to me that looked like somebody that thought Foley had dove on the first play and was frustrated that he got called for something he didn't think he deserved. Gave him a little extra shove thinking if, if I'm going to get penalized for something I don't think I did, I might as well do it anyway. And probably took him from a two minute minor to a five minute major. Well he certainly, certainly did get penalized for that. As the referees just stepping out onto the ice, we get set for second period action here from McMoran Place coming up in just about 90 seconds. A good crowd tonight on CL Spirit Night as the Prowlers wearing specialty jerseys designed by the CL Spirit, which is the dance company that has the Prowler Spirit, that, that sponsors the Prowler Spirit squad. So they have all of their jerseys, specialty jerseys tonight. Those jerseys will be auctioned off here in the arena after tonight's game during the skate with the players, which the Prowlers of course do every time there is a Casey's Kids Zone. 
And it looks like we don't see Jake Schultz coming back out onto the ice. So it's possible his night is actually done. Because again, we did not see him step back out onto the ice. Nobody is in that penalty box and Tyson Kirkby is having a discussion with the referee. So maybe it, the five minutes meant an automatic game misconduct. They still haven't put anyone in the penalty box. They do need to put somebody in there as there are 26 seconds left on the penalty before we go back to five on five. Prowler sending out the unit led by Evan Foley that scored that power play goal. Liam Freeborn lined up there on defense with Alex Johnson. It's Austin Thompson heading over to the penalty box. So it looks like Jake Schultz's night is over. Sam Merritt and Josh Newberg will get set for the opening faceoff of period number two. 26 seconds left to power play time for the Prowlers. 20 minutes up on the board for the middle frame of action of the first game of the FPHL's five game slate tonight. And we're underway, it's pushed forward. Devaney chasing after it. He gets there first, plays it back to the point to Freeborn. D to D to Johnson, back to Liam Freeborn. Devaney steps in, shoots, and just missed it wide. Johnson able to keep it in. Played it off of Black Bear, that was Walters. Parker got as far as Freeborn at the line, then diving second effort from Brett Parker gets it out. We're back to five on five, so the Black Bears able to kill off the rest of that penalty without too much damage. Foley collects it, gives it back to Alex Johnson. Freeborn off the dasher and out. Powell kicks it forward. Couldn't get through Freeborn. And it looks like a delayed penalty was coming against Binghamton. The referee had his arm up. It was the near side official in the Binghamton zone. I'm not sure what he saw. Looks like too many men. So too many men on the ice is the call against the Binghamton Black Bears. The Prowlers wanted that call earlier. You saw them asking for it yesterday as well during a couple of Binghamton changes, and this time the referees get them. I didn't see it there, at least egregiously so, but that's something that maybe you say to the ref a few times throughout a series like this, and they might be looking for it a little bit more, and obviously second period we got the long change here, so. Guys might be jumping the boards a little bit early. Ivashkin couldn't handle that pass cleanly or else he would have had a shorthanded breakaway. Lopez in with Ivashkin. Lopez couldn't get it over there. Schumacher's stick went flying. Prowlers go up the other way. Federley drops it off to McLean. Federley again. Put it on net. Joseph able to steer it out of play. Into the netting. So the Black Bears, it's funny. The one that you don't see, the too many men on the ice that you don't see is the one that ends up getting called. It's funny how that works. Well, that's when they're really trying to get away with it. So Federley and Newberg in the face-off circle. Newberg able to win it back. Fitzgerald off the glass all the way down. 35 seconds gone, and the too many men on the ice penalty being served by Gavin Yates. Federley up to Graham. Gives it to McLean, heading into the zone. Torrey McLean muscled off by Fitzgerald. Clearing attempt only got as far as Frank Schumacher. Here's Graham below the goal line. Graham walks, gives to Schumacher. Up high, Federley wrists it on. That one goes off the backboards. And it's cleared out to center by Mac Lewis. 50 seconds to go on the Prowler's power play. Federley sent it across towards Foley. Black Bears get it right back out. Federley up to Foley. 
Goes into the near side corner. It's chopped out of play. And right into the stands. That one won't be delay of game. And that one landed about a foot and a half away from a woman who is looking the opposite way of the ice. She didn't even react. She has no idea a puck just landed a foot away from her. No, the CL Spirit cheerleaders just had to let her know. I think I saw one of them duck and cover. We had one hit in last night's game. No long-lasting injuries from there, Have, however. Devaney walks and shoots, a save by Joseph. Where's the Schumacher family when you need them, right? Yeah. Down low, it's Foley, out to Johnson. Now Freeborn, penalty about to expire. Devaney put it on, Joseph with the save, and the net comes off its moorings. And Kirkby just with a little bit extra there for Sam Merritt. One second left up on the penalty clock. Adam Haynes and Dustin Henning step out onto the ice. Henning is going to line up in the center ice face-off circle, more at the red line, just to make sure there's no funny business with Gavin Yates stepping out of the penalty box. Tied up there on the faceoff. We're back to five on five. Here is Yates. Speeding up ice. Yates dangled it off his own stick. And he's shoved off by Henning. Ivashkin taken down by Hainzel behind the net. Comes out high to Fitzgerald. Dumps it around towards Yates. Yates taken in by Foley still with the puck and still chugging. And Foley able to get back to the point. Fitzgerald put it on. Powell kept it in. Foley up to Devaney. He tries to start a rush. Here's Liam Freeborn. Freeborn inside out on Fitzgerald. Puck pops out to the slot. Poked away by Yates. Couple of prowlers on coming there. But unable to get a shot on Taylor Joseph. Four minutes gone in this period as Ivashkin picked off a pass, just couldn't get a shot off. Prowlers just playing with fire a little bit when it comes to Nikita Ivashkin. You saw it a little bit yesterday. We're seeing it a couple of times tonight. Shirtrand rims it around. Joseph there to stop it. Played it right off of Merritt. Does get to a friendly stick for Taylor Joseph. Jay back in. Jay looking for a midi in front, they score! It bounced off a couple of Black Bears and found its way five hole on Taylor Joseph. That will go down as one of the weirder ones, but it gives the Prowlers the lead early in the second. Just like you drew it up, drawing some inspiration from the Binghamton third goal from last night maybe. A little bit of an odd bounce. Eventually those things will even out. Well, you talk about puck luck in a hockey game and that's about as puck lucky as you can get. I think that pass hit a couple of black bears and just went perfectly five-hole on Taylor Joseph. Browlers have their first lead of the night and for Dalton J, it's his team leading 25th goal of the season. Schumacher in, shoot, saved by Joseph. Jay on the rebound, and Joseph got that one too. Fed over towards Chartrand. Up to Jay. Now sends Merritt in. Tried the back pass, only found Thompson. So Schumacher and Minnie. Each picking up the assist. They each had an assist last night as well. As D'Angelo steps into one, whipped it wide. Coachman dumps it back in. Schumacher steps behind the net. Prowler's in the midst of a change. Five and a half gone in this period. Schumacher just dangled Kirkby in front of his own net. It's a dangerous play, but a confident one from Frank Schumacher. 
Yates missed Kirkby with that pass. Lewis back towards Powell. And now Boylar wrists it up. Missed his intended target by a few feet, but Kirkby first on it. And a sharp angle try stopped by Hofflin. And the net has come off its moorings. They'll say the Prowlers are not allowed to change, but that one an innocent enough looking play almost turned into a goal for Binghamton. Looked to me like Hofflin thought it was gonna go for an icing and the Binghamton player beat it out. Looked like he had a pretty good uh, beat on it. It's pretty close to the net. I'm surprised Hoff didn't just come out and play it. We'll take a timeout with 14.03 to go in this second period. Prowlers up by one. You're watching Port Huron Prowlers Hockey on the Prowlers YouTube channel. I've worked at Pioneer and now Corteva for 36 years. It goes by very quickly. This is a pretty noble profession for your giving back to humanity. Curiosity is so important. I learn something new every day. What's that next challenge that may occur for farmers? You do really feel like you've got an impact on what's coming. I can see how we're making things better. And we have the best solutions for our farmers. And I think we're here to feed and fuel the world. I'm proud to be part of that culture and I'm proud to be part of the company. Two one Prowlers, 14.03 to go. Second period and Dalton Jay with about as strange a goal as you can score. Bouncing it off a couple of Black Bears. Maybe he should go and hit the pool tables after this game with the kind of bounces he's getting there. But it gives the Prowlers a two to one lead and that's not to say it's un an undeserved two to one lead. Prowlers up on the Black Bears six to one in shots in this second period, 19 to nine so far for the game. And looks like the Prowlers are playing with just about as much fire as they did last night. Yeah, they've had some good energy in this period so far. Wanna keep it up here. Sometimes the TV timeouts can disrupt some of your momentum, especially after a fluky little play like that. Just got a whistle. Kirkby pulls it out of the pile. Couldn't get it all the way through to Hofflin. Now Frank Schumacher to his side, scrum behind the cage. Johnson trying to pull it out. Instead, it comes to Schumacher. Feeds Graham. Here's McLean. Johnson just ripped it on net as bodies were flying along that blue line. Kyle Powell will settle things down behind his own net and wait for a breakout. Kirkby knocked it down at the blue line. Hainsel takes the pass from Henning and moves it along. Good breakout there from the Prowlers. Here's Graham into the zone. Across looking for Henning. I was poked away by a back checking Kirkby. Boylar has Ivashkin charging up ice. Hainsel with a good step on him. And now Hainzel over to Freeborn with some space and with Devaney gets it over there. And Devaney couldn't get that shot off cleanly. Two on one developing. But Ivashkin didn't go with the play and Alex Johnson was coming off the bench so no rush there for the Black Bears. Hainzel gives it over to Johnson. Foley one taps it on for Freeborn. Liam Freeborn pulls up. All the way across looking for Thackeray. He just gets it deep. And now a two on one for Bingham Tiz. Thompson shoots it himself. And a good save from Wyatt Hofflin. Just his second sh save of the period. Devaney back out for the Prowlers. Joseph plays it back in Devaney's direction but he was heading off the ice. Black Bear starring rush, here's Ivashkin behind everyone. Bad stack by Wyatt Hofflin, great save. And Chartrand able to backhand it out of danger. And then they deflect it in. Ivashkin got the tip on it through traffic and the Black Bears tie it up at two with 11.50 to go in the second period. Kind of a weird sequence there. You get a save on a breakaway against 
perhaps the best goal scorer in the league right now. And then kind of the slow rolling screen deflection gets through somehow. So Nikita Ivashkin scores at McMore in place for the first time this season as he picks up his league high at 32nd of the year. Shark Trend dumps it in as the Prowler is looking for the response. Joseph will just put the glove on top and hang on for a whistle. 11.34 to go, second period. Shots on goal 20 to 12 in favor of the Prowlers, 7-3 in this period. But each team with a goal in each period. 2-2 two, two hour score. Referee pointed in Binghamton's direction, so Newberg out, Parker in. I thought Barrett thought he was the one out as he stepped out. Here's Jay dumping it back in. Prowlers off sides, they need to touch up. Finally, all five guys back to the neutral zone. Coachman wrists it all the way down, blocked by Schumacher. And as many touched that puck first, hand pass called against the Prowlers. Face off will come all the way back into Prowlers territory. Officially, it's Ivashkin from Fitzgerald and Lopez to tie the score. Newberg and Federley in the faceoff circle. They saw off one back by the Prowlers. There's Minnie up towards Graham. Powell takes it back for Binghamton. Coachman only hit Minnie at the Prowlers blue line. Here's Graham. Put it out in front. Joseph steers it to the side boards. Federley trying to work it down towards McLean. Federley still tied up there by Newberg. Coachman in there as well. Graham digging for that puck. Now it's a three-a-side scrum as Schumacher and Parker get involved. Nobody able to pull that puck out. Finally, it comes out to McLean. He just puts it right on net, and Joseph drops it off for Powell. Long pass comes up to Parker. He'll rim it in. Minnie able to poke it out. Parker right back in. Hoffman stops this one. 10-11 to go, second period. Here's Gino lifting it out. And it was knocked down by Lewis's glove and Yates, first one to play it. So an obvious hand pass there. And they blow it dead. 10-04 to go, second period. Feels like the first half of this second period has taken forever, especially compared to the pace of the first. A lot of whistles, and I would say the play has been a little bit slow as well. A lot of neutral zone play, a lot of plays along the boards. Not as much offensive zone time. Makes sense without so many penalties. Fitzgerald holding behind his own cage. Up to Boilar. Matthew Boilar dangles in. Now Henning in the corner. Devaney pulls it out. Gives it up to Foley. Evan Foley looking to start a rush. Henning charging towards the net. Foley couldn't get it there. As Fitzgerald block it, blocked it, here's Yates. Evan Yates with a steppy shoot saved by Hoffman. The rebound's right there. And Kirkby just put it right through the goal mouth. Yates dangles in. Evan Yates, toe drag, shoots it wide. And a late arm coming up from the referee as Gavin Yates was sliding. He looked like he got a stick up high. It wasn't going to be called until he slid out of that pile and the referee saw him and put his arm up. By the way, the Binghamton net is empty. The extra attacker on the delayed penalty. Ivashkin to the point to Walters. 
D to D Coachman. Down low, here's Yates. Coachman up high, over to Walters. Down low, Ivashkin. His pass all the way across, blocked by Alex Johnson, and that will draw the whistle. So the penalty coming up against the port here on Prowlers, it's Evan Foley. So it is possible, I thought it might have been against Dustin Henning, but it is against Foley. It's possible I may have missed something, but it will be a Binghamton power play when we return. You're watching Port Huron Prowlers Hockey on the Prowlers YouTube channel. Adventures await you at the award-winning Doubletree by Hilton Port Huron. Experience the breathtaking view of sailboats and freighters framed against the background of the impressive Blue Water Bridge, all from the comfort of your elegant guest room balcony. Planning a wedding? The Doubletree by Hilton has the perfect setting to celebrate a marriage with its wonderful landscaping and beautiful reception area. So whether it's a romantic getaway, a family vacation, or a company outing, sweeten it with a view to remember at the Doubletree by Hilton, Port Huron. It's a Black Bears power play with 8.26 to go in the second period. Uh, the Prowlers and the Black Bears tied up at two goals apiece. Will Wiggleman, Joe Noonan here with you at McMoran Place. Thanks so much for joining us tonight on the Port here on Prowlers YouTube channel. I believe I did miss something there because I thought it was Gavin Yates who got high sticked by Dustin Henning as he was coming through. Instead, I believe it was Mac Lewis who got a stick up high from Evan Foley away from the play, so that is my bad. Either way though, a Binghamton power play. As finally they get the lights back up here at McMoran Place. Matt Graham and Chad Lopez in for the faceoff. Comes out to Yates. He swung and missed at that shot. Here's Dan Chartrand. Working on a short-handed opportunity. Chartrand all the way across. And Thackeray will take it back at center, down to a knee. Able to get to Alex Johnson. He dumps it in. That kills the first 20 seconds. So officially, it's Evan Foley for cross-checking. As Ivashkin works it around. Up high, Kirkby. Now here's Thompson. Back up to Kirkby. Five forwards on this power play for Binghamton. But Kirkby has been known to play defense as Thompson had his shot blocked and hanging the other way is Thackeray. As Yates back and Thackeray is just going to take it into the corner, try and kill some clock. We're halfway through the penalty to Evan Foley. Yates into the Prowler zone. And Schumacher able to find that loose puck and clear it down. Joseph to play it. Elton J giving him a little bit of pressure. Now here's Kirkby. All the way across. Mac Lewis up into the Prowler's zone. Lewis all the way around the Prowler's net. Fitzgerald across to Boylar. Wristed it on, it got blocked and Federley just one hands it out of the zone. Parker with 18 left on the power play. Newberg, cross towards Parker. And now Minnie able to clear it only as far as Fitzgerald at the line. Final seconds ticking off the man advantage. Fitzgerald wristed it on, deflected down. And Hoffman able to make the pad save. And Federley backhands it out to center. Prowlers with a successful kill. Here's Parker on the steal, Parker with a back pass to the slot, only found Sam Merritt. He sends Sam Gagnon on his way. Gagnon just couldn't catch up to that puck as he tipped it past Fitzgerald. And 6.08 to go in the second period. We are still knotted up at two after another successful PK for the Prowlers. They did a good job there weathering the storm. That was a nice little play coming out of it there between Merritt on the back check and then finding Gagnon 
coming through the middle. Just rolled off the end of his stick. Sam Merritt getting set with his line for the faceoff. Gagnon on his left wing with Dalton J being a part of that penalty kill. Gagnon gets an opportunity as Joseph blockers aside a shot from Adam Hainzel. Two on one now for the Black Bears, but Yates just left it behind. Here's D'Angelo back up towards Yates. D'Angelo and Merrick collided at center. Prowlers dumping it off that Zamboni door. Here's Coachman over to Walters. Up the boards, Parker able to get it out. Yates sends it deep. Hofflin gives over to Henning. Up to Chartrand. Now over to Adam Hainzel. 5.25 to go in the period as Hainzel rockets it in. And Joseph gloves it down, leaves it for Kyle Powell. Both teams completing changes. Powell hanging out, waiting for the breakout to begin. Yates drops it back off to the Black Bears assistant captain. Ivashkin with a step, he shoots and a save by Hofflin. He has it in his equipment. And another big save from Wyatt Hofflin on Nikita Ivashkin. 5.03 to go, second period. We are still tied up at two. Binghamton really loving that stretch pass, especially with the smaller neutral zone here at McMoran Place. Yeah, it seemed like Ivashkin got up pretty quick on the D there. Hoff did a nice job just sealing everything down low. We call it jamming the box. Box, box control as a goalie means the space in front of you as it relates to the size of the net and where the puck is on the ice creating a square angle for you to cover. Did a good job filling that space well. We will take a timeout with 4.52 to go in the second period in a 2-2 game. You're watching Port Huron Prowlers Hockey on the Prowlers YouTube channel. Good evening, everybody. Will Wiggleman here with you on the Port Huron Prowlers YouTube channel. Freeboard, cut into the net, save, rebound, score! Every goal. Back to Jay. Rich shot, he scores! Every save. Going the other way, but Pandria, saved by Hoffman, the rebound, another one! Every hit. Good hip check! Every. Fire City score! Single. Michael Haskins, the cut pad, heading with another good shot, and then a left! Oh boy! Game. Cardinal! Poked away by Hoffman, and the Prowlers win it! The Port Huron Prowlers YouTube channel. Subscribe now. Back here at McMoran Place, 4.52 to go. Second period, Prowlers and Black Bears knotted up at two goals apiece. Will Wiggleman, Joe Noonan, back with you on the Port Huron Prowlers YouTube channel. It will be a face-off just uh, outside of the Prowlers blue line. And it's won by the Black Bears. Powell dumps it in hard off the corner boards. Thackeray. Up towards Foley, just able to get it out as he couldn't handle that pass cleanly. Fitzgerald back in. Colin Fitzgerald, power move around the net. Devaney took a spill in front. Meanwhile, Ivashkin with the puck. Ivashkin cuts to the slot, save! The rebound comes all the way out. And the Prowlers able to rescue it and clear. Lopez up towards Ivashkin, he tips it in. Foley tips it right back out. Here's Frank Schumacher. Now up towards Devaney. Foley comes in, but Freeboard just couldn't stretch the leg back far enough. And offside is the call. 3.56 to go, second period. And this period seems to be a little bit of the opposite of the first period. This time it's the Prowlers with most of the pressure in the opening 10 minutes. And now the Black Bears have come on as of late. Lewis 
Wins it back towards Walters. Boilar, cross corner dump. But right off the side of the cage there by Lewis. Yates cycles it down to Lewis. Across to Boilar. He was looking for a tip, couldn't find it. Kirkby in front, save by Hofflin. Kirkby again to the point. Deflected away by Schumacher. Lewis pushing Schumacher off. Physical play going on on the far side boards. Schumacher has it again. Rims it around near side. Tory McLean on it. Chipped out by Graham. Back to Black Bear Ice. And JT Walters collects with three minutes to go in period number two. Kirkby over to Yates. He gets a cross corner dump and Schumacher gives it up to Chartrand. Dan Chartrand drops it off to Jay. His shot didn't get all the way through. Chartrand towards Merritt. Comes all the way out to Hainzel. He just gets it deep. All the way around it comes to Powell. Back to center. Here's Hainzel. D to D to Henning. That puck looks like it hit somebody on the Black Bears bench. So whistles blow with 2.16 to go in period number two. Face-off one back by the Black Bears. Merritt looking up towards Jay. He backhands it out. Powell gloves it down at center. And he sends it around. Hofflin almost gave it away there. This time the Prowlers do turn it over and comes to Hofflin. Rebound loose there for a second. Hofflin able to cover up with a minute 53 to go in period number two. Looked like a bit of miscommunication there between Hofflin and the defenseman. I would imagine uh, Henning is trying to be vocal out there. Maybe it just wasn't loud enough. Lopez wins it forward, but Johnson first on the puck. Thackeray trying to force it out. Devaney has it. Sends it all the way across to Freeborn. Tips it past Powell. Freeborn. Back to Foley, in front looking for Devaney, and now Thackeray winds and fires it wide. That one was deflected wide, 90 seconds left to go in period two, and the best Prowler's chance in quite a while. Freeborn looking for more. Around the net, Freeborn taken down, a shot by Johnson, just goes wide. Hoffman to the bench on the delayed penalty. Freeborn, or Foley, excuse me, to Thackeray, and now Johnson. Here's Freeborn, finds Thackeray trying to slide down. Powell touches up, and with a minute and one second to go in period number two, the Prowler's power play will go back to work, looking for a little bit of energy and a little bit of pressure as Binghamton has taken the last seven of the last eight shots in this game. Be a good chance here for the Prowlers to set it up in the zone. Spend hopefully all 61 seconds down there unless they can get one past Joseph. Federley and Kirkby set up for the faceoff. Kirkby wins it back cleanly. Boylar gets it all the way down. And Joe Noonan, that took about five seconds, unfortunately, for the Prowlers. Here's Jay, feeds it across to Schumacher, rims it in. Federley just able to keep it in. McLean behind the net, Prowler's trying to set up here. Graham gets away from Boylar. Here's Schumacher, down low to Graham, put it out in front. 
Comes back to Federley at the point. Wrist shot was blocked. Graham able to settle it down. 20 seconds to go in the period. Schumacher pulls back. McLean taken down in front of the net. He's back to his feet. Federley couldn't rip the shot. 10 seconds left now. Schumacher to Federley. Now Jay takes it and saved by Joseph. Three seconds left and Schumacher won't get a shot off before the horn and McLean with a stick in on Joseph and the Black Bears are taking exception to that behind their own net. I think the buzzer had gone off right as Schumacher let the shot go and whether the buzzer had gone off or not, any team's gonna take exception to somebody touching the goalie when he's got the puck covered and especially after the period's over. And now McLean and Kirkby have each other. Gloves are down but it's a pile so he can't get a proper fight. Austin Federley has snuck in to even up the numbers from his defense spot. And McLean taking down a Black Bear that isn't actually Tyson Kirkby. I'm not sure who that is. Now Graham and Boylar getting into it. They're going to drop the mitts. Well, Boylar at least dropped the mitts and just takes Graham down. I think Matthew Boylar said something in French or English. I don't know, but it looks like the line he just suplexed him. <laughs> a pretty agile move for a linesman. Hey, the linesmen are athletes too. Kirkby and McLean having more words. Federally trying to keep the peace. Boylar's been sent to the locker room. Customarily, the Prowlers do get off the ice first, and the they do have to pass the Black Bears locker room on the way to their own. I'm not saying something will happen in the tunnel, but I'm saying, but I, what I am saying, if something does happen in the tunnel, we don't have cameras back there. So you're like, saying to do it in the tunnel? There will be no evidence. As McLean heads off the ice, and now the rest of the Prowlers. And now Kirkby and Federley again with a little pushing and shoving. Peace is being kept now by the referees. Everybody is separated. Black Bears having discussions with the referees. But beyond all of this, we head to the second intermission knotted up at two goals apiece. Shots on goal in that period. 12 for the Prowlers, 10 for the Binghamton Black Bears. For a total of 25 for Port Huron and 18 for Binghamton. A bit of a choppier period there. Really tough for either team to get anything going with any kind of flow. Yeah, you did not see a whole lot of offensive zone sustained pressure at either end of the ice. I'd look for both teams offensively to try to get a cycle going, good rotations with their defensemen out of the blue line and possess the puck a little bit more down low. Up the goal scorers in that second period for either side, Dalton J and Nikita Ivashkin. Their respective teams leading goal scorers add another and that's where we sit heading into the second intermission as Kirkby and Federley representing their teams over at the scorer's table. And it looks like the referees will sort this out between periods and we'll figure things out when we return for the third period of play. Will things get physical? Will things continue to escalate in the third period? It will be interesting to see as the Prowlers and Black Bears with 20 minutes left to play. Well, secure your seats for the Prowlers next home game as they take on the Motor City Rockers on Friday, February 17th 
at 7.05 p.m. Tickets are available online at phprowlers.com slash tickets or by phone at 810-985-6166. That's online at phprowlers.com slash tickets or by phone at 810-985-6166. 2-2, heading into intermission two between the Prowlers and the Black Bears. You're watching Port Huron Prowlers Hockey on the Prowlers YouTube channel.
Back here in Port Huron as we get set for the start of period number three between the Port Huron Prowlers and the Binghamton Black Bears. Will Wiggleman, Joe Noonan here with you at McMoran Place. Before we take a look back at that second period, let's take a look around the FPHL. We start in Delaware where the Thunder have a one to nothing lead over the Elmira Mammoth early in the second. Dare I say it, could the Thunder be on a winning streak? You know what they say, one's a fluke, two's a streak. That's what they say, the Thunder are on top. They're headed in the right direction on their way to a streak. They just dropped the puck in Watertown between the Wolves and the Danbury Hattricks. And neither team able to solve the goaltender yet, still no score. They're getting set to drop the puck in Winston-Salem between the Carolina Thunderbirds and the Columbus River Dragons. And the same thing in Mississippi between the Seawolves and the Motor City Rockers. Former Black Bear Joseph Shepard in the net tonight for Mississippi. Of course here it is 2-2 two to two as we get set for the third period of play. As the Prowlers and the Black Bears each getting a one goal in that second period before all hell broke loose near the end of it. I have not seen any penalties come down relating to all that. And now as I take a look, we have plenty of penalties to tell you about. So we have Tory McLean, two minutes for slashing, two minutes for unsportsmanlike conduct, and a 10 for unsportsmanlike conduct. Justin Coachman has a two-minute unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. Uh, Matt Graham, five for fighting and five minutes and a game misconduct for fighting after an original altercation. Matthew Boylar getting the exact same five for fighting and 10 minutes and a game misconduct for fighting after the original altercation. Justin Coachman picking up a 10-minute misconduct as well. So. If I'm reading all of this correctly, that means that Matt Graham and Matthew Boylar have been sent off and will not return to this game. They do have two minutes up on the board. I believe that will be because Tory McLean picked up the extra two for slashing. And if I had to guess, that would be for the whack he put on the goaltender Joseph Taylor, or Taylor Joseph, excuse me, at the end of that period. So two minutes are up on the board for Torrey McLean, and then everything else evens out as far as on-ice manpower, but the Prowlers lose Matt Graham, and the Bingleton Black Bears lose Matthew Boylar, and then the Prowlers losing Torrey McLean for much of this period, and the same thing for the Black Bears with Justin Coachman. So Austin Federley has no line mates left, at least for the start of this period, as both of his line mates have been sent to either the penalty box for an extended period of time or sent to the showers early. Well, he'll have Sam Gagnon left over and that should be just enough for him. Well, Sam Gagnon will certainly get some extra ships here in the third period. As once again, Matt Graham will not be returning and from a coaching standpoint, that will be interesting because Graham is a player coach, and I don't think he is allowed to come out onto the bench in his street clothes. I don't see him down there at the moment. I'm really not sure what the rules are as far as that goes. I see Danik Rodriguez brought a whiteboard out onto the ice, so maybe that should be an indication that he'll be taking over as head coach for the remainder of the game. Well, Danik is a smart guy, we'll see what line combinations he throws together. Prowlers, I believe, will need one more in the box to serve Tory McLean's two minutes that are actually up on the board. Sure they're figuring that out right now. And now Sam Gagnon heading over there to serve it. So we'll have four and four for the next 58 seconds and then a minute and two seconds of Binghamton Black Bear power play time in a two-all game Starting the third period. Merritt J. Johnson and Thackeray to start for the Prowlers. And for Binghamton, it's Ivashkin, Lopez, Powell, and Walters. Those are your four for either side. 
Two players decide in the penalty boxes. Looks like there's a bit of an issue with the crease over on Joseph's side. Linesman heading over towards the Zamboni door to alert the arena staff. Is that something that is known, that there's something going on sometimes with that crease over there? No, but it's pretty warm in here tonight. Ref is bringing a squeegee out. Probably just get rid of some of the excess water. It hasn't frozen yet. I'll just throw that water in the net. It's the kind of thing the Marlies do for you without having to ask. A little bit of extra water out there and that problem seems to have been solved. I asked Wyatt Hofflin if he's all good. He said he's fine. So we're set for four on four action to start this third period. Sam Merritt and Chad Lopez in the face off circle and Lopez wins it back cleanly. Here's Powell up for Lopez. Big hit there from Thackeray. Powell feeds Ivashkin coming down the slot. Couldn't kick it up to his stick. Ivashkin recovers. Nikita Ivashkin to the backhand. Forehand in tight. The puck's loose there. They jam away, and Merritt comes out with it. Jay starting a rush up. Thackeray. Down low. Goes behind the Black Bears net. Prowler's making a full change. Yates up towards Ivashkin. They couldn't connect. And now Minnie able to get it out of the zone. Minnie tripped up. No call coming from the referee. And a stick is in Gino Minnie's skate that belongs to a Binghamton Black Bear, but still no call. Ivashkin wristed on net and gloved and held by Wyatt Hofflin and Gino Mini wants an explanation. I, I don't want to be too biased here, but I am going to tell you the facts. There was a stick that belonged to a Binghamton Black Bear in Gino Mini's skates and he was and he fell down. And those are the facts. I'll let you come up with your own explanation and, and your own uh, conclusion. Five on four right now for the Binghamton Black Bears. For the next 54 seconds, as their first penalty is over. Chartrand and Lopez, the number 21s for either side, sliding into the face-off circle. It's Colin Fitzgerald, who is the first one to be released from the box. They're messing around with the clock a little bit. Not sure why. Says 1849 up there on the clock. 54 seconds left to go on the penalty to Tori McLean being served by Sam Gagnon and then McLean and Justin Coachman have to be in there for at least 10 more minutes each. Penalty is down completely, and I think the Prowlers would accept that as the answer, but I don't think that's how we're going to finish this one. It's back up, and now it's 49 seconds instead of 54, which makes sense because that means 11 seconds were taken off because the penalty started at the beginning of the period. It said 54 even though... So it was said 6 seconds came off the penalty, but 11 seconds came off the game clock. I don't know, lots of confusion, but it seems to be right now and the Prowlers able to clear. This is why they get paid the big bucks. Yates into the Prowlers zone. Sends it down to Lopez, back up high to Yates. Lopez again. Wrists it on, hit mini and dropped 
right in front of Wyatt Hofflin. He covers up for whistle. 17 seconds left on the penalty being served by Sam Gagnon. Face off coming between Lopez and now Evan Foley fresh off the bench. It's one back by the Black Bears, but they split their own defenseman. So that's as good as a Prowler's clear as Powell in his own end. Plays behind the net. Five seconds left on the penalty as Gagnon is set to step out. Here's Ivashkin behind the cage. But fed it out in front. Jay has Gagnon up ahead of the play. Here is Gagnon, pulls up, put it on net, save the rebound, and Taylor Joseph got that one too. Look to Jay, me. Gagnon on the steal, and that one hit a stick and went high. Thompson back in. Couldn't take a shot. It's held up by Hainzel below the goal line. Ivashkin and Foley in there as well. Ivashkin comes out and a good kick save from Hofflin. Just able to reach that pad back to the near side post. And Ivashkin can't believe he couldn't tuck that one. But some good chances on both ends. That was a good save there by Hofflin. The other end it looked to me like on a good save by Joseph that Schumacher may have kicked it so may not have counted anyway if the refs had noticed. Newberg wins that faceoff back. Walters put it on, hit a body in front. Jay sends Gagnon on his way. Gagnon has to catch up to it. And he stops up below the goal line. Here's Evan Foley working it up high. Got through Henning at the point. Parker chasing it down. Hofflin there. He'll steer it away from Brett Parker. Freeborn gives to Foley. Up to Jay. Has Foley going to the net. Jay shoots. And just rose it high and wide. All Dalton Jade needed there was a rebound with Evan Foley crashing the cage. Instead he went to pick the top corner and just couldn't do it. Federley kicks it out to center. Three on three rush. Federley puts it down low. And Joseph with a good pad save. Johnson able to keep it in at the point. Comes around to Walters. Devaney taps it back to Alex Johnson. He risks it on. That's blocked. A couple of Black Bears collide. And then Johnson's second shot also blocked. This time out of play. 16-16 to go in this third period. Game tied at two. Both teams with some chances early in this third period. Shots are four apiece in the frame. Johnson. Rims it all the way around towards Devi. Put it out in front. And Federley couldn't direct that one on net. Johnson up to Federley. He deflects it in. Kyle Powell over to Fitzgerald. Now Gavin Yates. Couldn't dance his way through center. Freeborn up to Foley. Looking for Devaney just out of his reach. Fitzgerald around towards Kirkby. Rink wide pass off the boards to Lewis. Muscled off by Johnson. Kicked around towards Thackeray. Don Thackeray through center. He'll take the skating space, but it's poked off his stick. Ivashkin surrounded by Prowlers as he enters the zone. Knocked off his stick by Minnie. Ivashkin then takes a hit from Foley. Minnie able to one-hand it on towards Thackeray. Comes out to the point. Walters deflected wide by Thompson slipping through the slot. Merritt to the outside. Sam Merritt waiting for help. He just drops it off. Black Bears the other way. Here's Thompson. Into the zone with Lopez. Prowler lost his stick. That was Gino Minnie. And he knocked down Thompson even without a stick. Here's Lopez with a shot saved by Hofflin, and he'll hang on for a whistle. 14.40 to go, third period. 
We are still deadlocked at two. You're watching Port Huron Prowlers Hockey on the Prowlers YouTube channel. I've worked at Pioneer and now Corteva for 36 years. It goes by very quickly. This is a pretty noble profession for your giving back to humanity. Curiosity is so important. I learn something new every day. What's that next challenge that may occur for farmers? You do really feel like you've got an impact on what's coming. I can see how we're making things better. And we have the best solutions for our farmers. And I think we're here to feed and fuel the world. I'm proud to be part of that culture and I'm proud to be part of the company. Fourteen forty to go, third period. Prowlers and Black Bears knotted up at two apiece here at McMorran Place. Defensive zone faceoff coming for the port here on Prowlers. And both teams have had their opportunities so far in this frame. Prowlers coming into this game with a four one and one record when tied after two periods of play as they were tonight. So see if that factors in at all. As the lights are back on and we're just about set for a face off. Face off coming to Wyatt Hoffland's left. Federley's line is out there. Well, not exactly his complete line with both of his wingers either in the penalty box or in the showers. Here's Chartrand into his own down. Chartrand with a shot just pushed it wide and Joseph covers up the rebound off the backboards. It's Federley, Chartrand, and Gagnon. Of course, the Prowlers no strangers to playing short a couple of forwards. Something they've done a few, more than a couple of times this season and have been decently successful. Comes down low, short trend, with an inside opportunity, Joseph with the good save. Battle along the boards, short trend gets it down low, pops out high to Henning. Dustin Henning sends it to Gagnon. Took a hit, Lopez tried to chop it forward. Instead, it went out of play with 14.01 to go in the third period. A good in tight opportunity there for Dan Chartrand. Newberg, one touches it on, and the one touch pass further from Parker goes on to Taylor Cutting. Cutting puts it out in front, and Barker was there on the back door, just couldn't tap it home. Walters leaves it for Newberg. Freeborn disrupted that pass. It's a two on one for the Prowlers. Foley with Devaney. Foley stops up, shoot, saved by Taylor. Joseph, the rebound. Sent out. Here's Thackeray. Dylan Thackeray had it poked off his stick back to center. Now a two on one was developing. Newberg went to the bench and Parker shot. Stopped by Hofflin coming all the way out. Thackeray sends it back to Black Bear territory. 13 minutes to go in this third period. Fitzgerald over towards Powell Schumacher. Pushed it all the way to the far corner. That got through plenty of traffic. Here's Schumacher again. His pass to Minnie exits the zone. Minnie gets it right back. Fitzgerald took it away. Here's Kirkby. Poked from him by Schumacher. Now Minnie steps out. Gives up to Merritt. One touch on for Dalton J. Jay held up there by Lewis. Minnie just trying to get it deep. 
Kirkby sends it out. His shot, though, hit Federley. Jay with a nice move around Kirkby. Now here's Merritt to Jay. Sent a blind pass in front, nobody home. Henning sends it towards the net. Now Foley on the puck. Off the boards to Minnie, right on! And saved by Joseph. Merritt out high to Jay. He shoots. That hit a body on the way through. And Kareen's out of play. 11.47 to go. Third period. Prowlers with some pressure and some chances, but Taylor Joseph has stood tall, and as has Wyatt Hoffman on the other side. One back to Hainzel. His shot blocked the second try. Got through and found the back glass. Foley looking in front. Comes all the way out to Henning. Winds and fires. Saved by Joseph and he'll hang on. 11 and a half to go in this third period. We've been treated to a great game tonight. Tightly contested between these two great teams. Face off, one back by the Prowlers. Hainzel, one taps it on. Here's Henning. Rising shot, caught the glass and flies out of play. So the face off will stay inside the Black Bears end. Foley and Lopez in on the face off. Foley wins it back, here's Henning. Down low towards Chartrand. Gagnon walloped there by Thompson. Ivashkin couldn't collect the pass at the Prowler's blue line. Now here's Henning. Adam Haynes wants to go recollect his stick. He's got it. And now the puck comes in his direction. Can't reach that pass. Powell off the boards towards Lopez. Battle in front of the Prowler's bench. Powell comes out with it, and he sends one just wide off the glass back to center. D'Angelo back in. The sharp angle try saved by Hoffman, and he's able to gather in the rebound and hang on for a whistle. Now Ivashkin getting into it with Austin Federley. Crowd gathering at the side of the net. Nothing much coming from that one, you, but you figure there would be a, a little bit of the rough stuff after the brouhaha that ensued at the end of the second period. McLean and Coachman are the two still sitting in the box as they continue to serve their penalties. Newberg and Federley in on the faceoff. Tied up there. Thackeray around to Freeborn. Off the boards towards Federley. Devaney into the Black Bears zone. Devaney between his own legs. Put it out in front. Comes all the way to the point where Freeborn is waiting. Federley put it on net. Joseph able to find it through the screen and cover up for a whistle. 10.15 to go in period number three. Offensive zone draw coming for the Prowlers as Newberg and Federley are in for it. Newberg able to win it and it's rimmed around to Parker. Has cutting Going up, Ice tried to chip it to him. And Cutting finishes his check on Alex Johnson. Thackeray off the boards and out. Cutting with a hit on Freeborn. Thackeray able to force it forward. Devaney couldn't get through Powell. 
Now Kyle Powell, rink wide pass to Brett Parker. Parker gives it off to Yates, tried to feed the middle, Johnson knocked it away. Prowler starting a rush. It's Freeborn, in, tries to split the D, couldn't pick it up on the other side, able to get to Johnson. Could only manage a weak shot. Clear to the corner, Kirkby and Federley in there digging for it. Tyson Kirkby comes out with it. Mini around the net. Foley up to Merritt. Sam Merritt down low. Kirkby picks it up on the far side. Jay couldn't bat it forward, so here's... Lewis, leaving it for Yates. Yates with some good moves, couldn't get a shot away. Frank Schumacher leading the rush. Three on two if they hurry. Merritt into the zone. Lost the handle, put it on net, and Joseph steers it out of play. 8.46 to go, third period. And the Prowlers getting their opportunities, but Taylor Joseph has stood tall. You're watching Port Huron Prowlers Hockey on the Prowlers YouTube channel. Adventures await you at the award-winning Doubletree by Hilton Port Huron. Experience the breathtaking view of sailboats and freighters framed against the background of the impressive Blue Water Bridge, all from the comfort of your elegant guest room balcony. Planning a wedding? The Doubletree by Hilton has the perfect setting to celebrate a marriage with its wonderful landscaping and beautiful reception area. So whether it's a romantic getaway, a family vacation, or a company outing, sweeten it with a view to remember at the Doubletree by Hilton Port Huron. Eight forty-six to go, third period in Port Huron, a 2-2 game between the Prowlers and the Binghamton Black Bears. Shots on goal in this period, favoring the Prowlers nine to seven, 34-25 for Port Huron for the game. But they haven't been able to solve Taylor Joseph in this third period yet, and that's why the score remains tied. Of course, Wyatt Hofflin also doing his part on the other end. Jay almost stole it away. Lopez knocked him down. Adam Hainzel. Over towards Henning. That one deflected in, so no icing. Walters gets it to Thompson. Physicality picking up in this one as both teams trying to fi finish their checks. Henning working his way below the goal line. Muscled off Ivashkin. Comes to the point, Hainzel just gets it deep. Walters over to Fitzgerald. Rims it up the boards, Hainzel pinches in. It gets past him, here comes Lopez on a break. Chad Lopez, sharp angle try, stopped by Hofflin and the rebound clear to the boards. Prowlers turn on the odd man rush. Jay, put it on, saved by Joseph. The rebound comes out to Thackeray and he gets lit up there by Chad Lopez. And then Ivashkin runs into the linesman and that breaks up a two on one potentially for Binghamton. Genyon wrists one. Oh, just off of Joseph's glove and off the glass. That shot was a lot more dangerous than maybe it looked coming off the stick. Oh boy, action at both ends in these last 30 or so seconds. The Prowlers got very lucky that the linesman ran into Nikita Ivashkin there. Freeborn works below the goal line. Finds Shark Train, he shoots, saved by Joseph. The rebound lay there. It was still loose, but the referee lost sight of it, and he blows his whistle as Joseph didn't have that one completely secured, but it was in front of him, and the referee behind the net was unable to see it. So the Black Bears get the quick whistle, 
and we get a chance to breathe for a second with 7.02 to go in the third period. Justin Coachman has been returned to his bench. Tory McLean still sitting for a couple of more minutes. Remember, he picked up an extra two. So he had to sit for 14 minutes while Coachman only had to sit for 12. So McLean has about another minute and a whistle until he can come back out. Face off tied up there at the dot. Finally poked towards Devaney. Newberg below the goal line. Flips it out. Schumacher corralling it ahead of Lewis and just bodying off Mac Lewis to make sure he didn't get a chance at the net. Mini back towards Schumacher. Now Devaney off the boards and out. Justin Coachman up towards Parker. Now Kirkby's pass knocked away by Devaney with Coachman able to recover. D'Angelo left it for a teammate. Instead, he just left it for the Prowlers. Foley to Freeborn. Freeborn looking for a shooting lane, can't find one. He passes over to Schumacher. Wrists it off the backboards. Joseph keeps it below the goal line. Schumacher now D to D to Mini. Wrist shot gloved and held by Taylor Joseph. And now Powell getting in Freeborn's face. Gives him a little extra shove. And Liam Freeborn with no change on the expression on his face heads back to the Prowler's bench. He has two seconds and a whistle until he's allowed out. 6.02 to go in this third period. But he does have to wait for a whistle before he can step out of the penalty box. Here's Yates winning the faceoff away from Evan Foley. Henning just couldn't get that one forward. Black Bears keep it in, it's Fitzgerald. Gets it deep to Yates. Merritt able to take it ahead of him. Turned it over to D'Angelo in the middle of the ice. D'Angelo, now it's taken back by Merritt. Black Bears want a penalty as Gavin Yates is without a stick. Here's Fitzgerald, up to Yates. Gagnon able to poke it off of Ivashkin's stick. He sends Dalton Jay on his way. Jay with a shot. That hit Walter's stick and flies out of play. 5.13 to go, third period. And now Tory McLean can exit the penalty box and head back to his own bench. So nobody in the penalty box now. I'm sure the penalty box attendants are a little bit lonely. Lopez and Federley in the face-off circle. Johnson couldn't feed it over to Thackeray. Gagnon brings it back in, gives to Devaney. Try to step around his man. Puck ends up in the corner. Powell takes Gagnon in. To a side scrum. Gagnon goes down in a heap. Gagnon in plenty of distress over there in the far side corner in the Binghamton zone. Bridget Smith, the Prowler's trainer, heading over there. and She has a cheering section tonight, Noons. I don't know if you see it over in the suite over there with plenty of fans for Bridget Smith, lots of sign. One of them says, trainers rule cheering every time, each time Bridget Smith has to come out onto the ice. So everybody has fans, including the training staff here in Port Huron.
Well, in other news, Sam Gagnon is back to the bench under his own power. Four forty-nine to go, third period. Face-off will go to Prowler's ice because that's where the puck was when the whistle was blown. Prowlers only have four out there. And now Dan Chartrand goes out as the fifth skater. We are five on five here with 4.49 to go in the third period. Tori McLean fresh out of the box, able to get it out of the zone. Lopez looking to bring it right back in. And Lopez maybe a little bit of acting there. Chartrand on net, stopped by Joseph. Rebound taken by Ivashkin. He starts up ice. Nikita Ivashkin cuts to the middle, takes the shot off a of prowler stick and high. McLean starting a rush the other way. Short trend. Chops it towards the net. Powell there to rescue it for Binghamton. Here's Kyle Powell. Rims it around. Hofflin stops it, leaves it for Alex Johnson. Rink-wide pass comes to Sam Merritt, fresh off the bench. Merritt has Federley going to the net, couldn't get it there. Federley and Fitzgerald tied up along the wall. Lopez and Merritt digging in there as well. As time ticks away, 3.46 to go in the third period. Still a 2-2 game, and the rare whistle for a puck held up against the boards. You usually see the referees will let them play that out for a solid 30 plus seconds sometimes, but this time, no dice. They'll just drop the puck at the faceoff circle. They just announced the official attendance of 1,672 tonight at McMoran Place. We love a big crowd here. We hope to see all of you watching on the stream here at McMoran Place sometime soon. Plenty of home games coming up for the Prowlers the rest of the way, starting this upcoming Friday against the rival Motor City Rockers. That play comes in offside. And while we're on the topic, hockey is a great sport, it's, it's a fine one to watch, but there really is nothing like coming to a hockey game. It, you just experience it differently, the energy, the pace, the action, just there's so much that goes on behind the plays that we can't capture on our cameras. No matter how many cameras we have, we can't have all of them up on the screen at once. So you just have to come to the game to really get the full hockey experience. Like that sound of Gino Mitty hitting the scoreboard that hangs over center ice. That's impressive. I think it's the first time this season we've seen that. Oh, a face-off in Prowler's territory, one back by Port here on. Minnie this time keeps it on the ice as he sends it to Evan Foley. Foley wristed it wide. Gagnon took a spill, so he was trying to corral that puck. Here's Devaney. Down low, Foley. Up by Schumacher. He put a shot on, but the Prowlers are getting a penalty. Interference is the call against Sam Gagnon. So a late power play for the Binghamton Black Bears. 2.43 to go in the third period, and we'll get it when we come back. You're watching Port Huron Prowlers Hockey on the Prowlers YouTube channel. 
Good evening, everybody. Will Wiggleman here with you on the Port Huron Prowlers YouTube channel. Freeboard, cut into the net, save, rebound, score! Every goal. Back to Jay. Rich shot, he scores! Every save. Going the other way for Pandria, saved by Hoffman, the rebound, another one! Every hit. Good hip check! Every. Fires, and he scores! Single. Michael Haskins, the cut pad, heading with another good shot, and then a left! Oh, boy! Game. Cardinal. Poked away by Hoplin, and the Prowlers win it! The Port Huron Prowlers YouTube channel. Subscribe now. We're back in action. Guess that media timeout was a bit shorter than we were expecting. Here comes Lopez, up to Yates. Back to Lopez. Up high, Yates again. Kirkby just mishandled it at the line. Chartrand able to take it at center and send it down the ice. Kirkby. Into the zone, Ivashkin. Curls away in the corner. Kirkby, again having some trouble handling that puck. This time he's able to keep it in, but only momentarily. As Dan Chartrand sends it down, Prowlers begin to, to make a change. We're about halfway through the penalty. That sharp angle try, shouldered away by Hofflin. Goes all the way down as good as a Binghamton Black Bears clear. 54 seconds to go on the penalty to Gagnon. He sits in there, I'm sure, very nervous. Lopez, sliding block there by Gino Mini, comes to Yates. Leaves it for Kirkby. Kirkby tried to get it down low. Collected by Thompson below the goal line. Ivashkin couldn't pull the trigger. Popped out in the slot, and they turn around, shot, they score. Austin Thompson with a minute 10 to go. Power play goal, finds the loose puck. And Binghamton takes a three to two lead. Tough one to react to there. Everybody's collapsed down low and the puck's pinballing around a little bit. As a goalie and certainly as a defenseman as well, you're, you're trying to react to the play as it happens in front of you, but when you keep having to reset your base every split second, it might feel like you don't know when you're, you're really setting yourself up to react to what's happening. Well, the Sometimes Prowlers, you, you'll get caught on your heels a little bit. Well, the Prowlers have called timeout here and it's Austin Federley with the whiteboard and marker drawing up a play here. Just a minute 10 to go and the Prowlers now find themselves trailing by one. A really tough spot for a team like the Prowlers that felt like they had, I feel like they thought they had the better of the play for most of this game. They've they're carrying in the shots category right now, 37 to 28. But unfortunately for them, they couldn't beat Taylor Joseph in this third period. He has made all 12 saves he's had to make in this frame. Prowler sending out Devaney, Foley, Freeborn, Johnson, and Schumacher. I'm sure Wyatt Hoffman will be Headed to the bench as soon as the Prowlers can get possession in, in the zone. And there he goes. Empty net for the Prowlers. That one's launched out of play. Will they call it delay of game? They should. It went Will out, they call it, it delay the, of game? <laughs> it went out over the bench, but it, it went all the way out over the bench, over the back glass too. I think that's supposed to be the deciding factor. The referees are discussing it. Plenty of representatives from both sides wanting to hear it. And yes, a penalty coming against the Binghamton Black Bears. Minute two to go, it will be a six on four power play for the Port Huron Prowlers. An opportunity to tie the game with the net empty on the other end. Kyle Powell pleading his case right now. Now, I don't think it went all the way out, but it went over the divider between the benches because it 
it went over the divider between the benches into the Prowler's bench, but I think because it went over that divider, that's why it's out of play because that divider is at the same level as the rest of the glass around the rink. That's my guess. It's a smart point, Will. I was an English major, not a geometry major, so that did not cross my mind, but when you put it like that, how could I disagree? Well, either way, Josh Newberg sits and the Prowlers have Merritt, Foley, Devaney, Jay, Johnson, and Freeborn out there for this six on four opportunity. Lewis sends it all the way down wide of the empty net. 53 seconds to go in the third period. Prowlers need one. Jay taking off his stick. They send it down towards the empty net. Johnson knocked it down with a high stick and he'll touch up for a face-off. So I think Wyatt Hofflin will have to come back out with 39.9 seconds to go in the third period. And all of that comes off of a face-off loss in the offensive end. So Kirkby and Foley will take it. It's back to five on four with Hofflin in the cage. Prowlers win it. And Johnson moves it up to Foley. Hofflin back to the bench. Freeborn gives to Jay. Put it on, saved by Joseph, and he'll hang on. 27.5 to go in period number three. That same six out there for the Prowlers. The four for Binghamton are Kirkby, Lewis, Fitzgerald, and Walters. Devaney gets it back to the point. Federally with it to Johnson, wrists it on, deflected just wide. And Lewis able to chop it out, 16 seconds to go. Johnson up to Jay, he gets it in, Devaney chasing after it. Fitzgerald trying to hold it against the wall, Prowlers digging for it, final five seconds ticking off, and time is going to run out on the port here on Prowlers. As the Binghamton Black Bears defeat the Prowlers 3-2 on a late goal from Austin Thompson. And the season series ends up tied between these two teams. 3-3. Three three. The season series between these two. As the Prowlers win two here and one in Binghamton. And the Black Bears win two here and one in Binghamton. So unfortunately for Port Huron, unable to take advantage of, again, a, another well-played game by them. And unfortunately, it comes down to a late penalty and a broken play on a five-on-four chance. And the, sure, the Prowlers very frustrated with how this game ended. It was a tight game the whole way. And... Close games coming down to the wire like that. A lot of times it'll be more of a fluky play when one team gets an opportunity and they're able to make the most of it. Prowlers had a chance there at the end, obviously, with a six on four. Weren't able to tie it up. But both teams got their chances along the way. We want to get, take another opportunity to remind you about our next broadcast, Friday, February 17th. When the Prowlers take on the Motor City Rockers. Puck drops at 7.05, that's here at McMoran Place, so if you can, be sure to be here in person and get your tickets. But the pregame show starts at 6.50, puck drops at 7.05, right here on the Port here on Prowlers YouTube channel. Well, the third star of the game is Taylor Joseph, very deservedly so. I think he could have been the first star, Sam Merritt, Gets the second star with two assists, and Austin Thompson, the game winner, named the game's first star. But Taylor Joseph, 37 saves tonight on 39 shots. And this was one of those games you can say the goaltender was the reason the team won. Yeah, he made a lot of good saves and probably saved himself from having to make a few more with some solid rebound control. He points of the shot there pretty close to the end of the period, about a minute to go. Uh, the Prowlers let go right at his chest, didn't get deflected on the way in, and he did a nice job of freezing it, preventing any further chaos in front of him. Saw that throughout the game, 
really played within himself very well. Didn't get stretched out too often on many opportunities. Oh, the Prowlers now drop to 20, 15, and 3. 61 points, still third in the Continental. It fall back under 500 here at McMoran Place. Meanwhile, the Black Bears now 25, 8, and 2. 75 points, still second in the Empire Division. And I want to say that they clinch a playoff spot with the victory tonight. I believe that was the stipulation. They had to win in regulation, and they did so. So the Binghamton Black Bears, the second team in the FPHL, to clinch a playoff spot in the Empire Division. Nobody has clinched yet in the Continental Division, and I feel like that might be delayed more and more with the Columbus River Dragons losing a couple of games and the Mississippi Seawolves able to win some games. Let's take a quick look around the FPHL right now. But as I said, the River Dragons are losing games. They're up 2 to nothing on the Carolina Thunderbirds through one period of play. Now, speaking of the Mississippi Seawolves, they're tied with the Motor City Rockers 1-1 one -one after 20 minutes. Danbury Hattricks and the Watertown Wolves are in the second period, and Watertown has a 2-1 lead. And finally, the Delaware Thunder with a 3-1 lead over the Elmira Mammoth as they get set to start the third period at Delaware Fairground Center Ice Arena. Well, the Black Bears got the first goal in this one. It was Josh Newberg. There's past the midway point of that opening period, making it one to nothing again, taking advantage of a broken play, a rebound off a point shot from Matthew Boilar. Liam Freeborn able to tie it with a one-time blast. And that was how it looked heading into the first intermission, one to one. Dalton Jay got a little bit of puck luck as he bounced one towards, set one in front, hit a couple of Black Bears and found its way behind Taylor Joseph. But unfortunately for the Prowlers, that's all they would get past Taylor Joseph for the rest of the night. Nikita Ivashkin scored his first goal at McMoran Place this season, deflecting a Colin Fitzgerald shot. And it was 2-2 heading into the third period. Austin Thompson's goal with a minute 10 to go, a power play goal off a broken play, was the deciding factor in tonight's game. Well, that's going to do it for us here from McMoran Place. Thanks so much for tuning in on the Port Huron Prowlers YouTube channel. We hope to see you next time when the Prowlers take on the Motor City Rockers.